Hello, how are you doing? I've had one of those slightly stressful, busy work mornings, uh, but I think I have a couple of hours this afternoon when I'm going to be able to just relax and read a good book with a big cup of tea. And I'm just really looking forward to that moment of just going, ah, I, I can relax now, you know? And I have several books which I'm really keen to, to read. And so I thought I'd go through these new books. Um, most of them are newly published in January. Some of them are books that publishers have kindly sent me, and other ones are books that I've gone out and bought from a shop that I think look really good. First off, I want to talk about a book which I just read recently uh, called Tides by Sarah Freeman, and this is a debut novel about a woman that basically walks out on her life and moves to a seaside town that's quite an affluent place, but she doesn't really have any money, so she um, lives in in, uh, sort of on the, the fringes and lives in quite a rough way. And as we see her day-to-day -day existence, we get little bits of her past and why she left the the life she had behind and that the, the group this um, sense of grief that she suffered and um, and yeah it's quite it's quite poetic and moving how it does that and uses the tides and the movement of the ocean as a metaphor and uh, yeah I just thought it was really beautifully done and and moving and uh, yeah so I'll be looking forward to more writing from this author. Wolfskin by Laura Moreno and it's translated from the Spanish by Katie Whitmore and and this is another novel about a woman sort of at the crossroads in her life where her uh, her husband has left her, her mother has moved away to the Canary Islands, her father has recently died, so she moves back into her father's home and um, with her child and there tries to reassess her life alongside her sister where they go over details of, of their past. So it sounds like quite a contemplative searching novel in that way. The Night by Rodrigo Blanco Calderon and this is a novel set in Venezuela in the years 2008 to 2010 following the financial crisis and socio-political divides in the country at that time and it follows a number of characters. Um, some are real, some are fictitious and so it's a kind of blend of uh, yeah the real and the fictional and it's described as both crime fiction and metafiction which I think sounds really interesting. The Mediterranean Wall by Louis-Philippe d'Alembert and this is a novel about three different women. Uh, one is from Syria, one is from Eritrea, and one is from Nigeria and how they have to leave their respective countries and they're trying to travel to Europe and uh, they come together on a boat traveling across the Mediterranean and it's about uh, sort of their backstories but also their their journey, their perilous journey and uh, so this author author is Haitian and he writes both in uh, French and uh, Haitian Creole, uh, but this is translated from the, the French uh, by Marjolaine de Yeager. Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman, and this is a novel um, set in Georgian times in London and is about a woman that works in an antiquities um, shop that used to be owned by her parents and it's a business that's uh, been kind of failing and she comes across an ancient Greek vase um, which has a lot of secrets behind him which she hopes will revive her business um, alongside a man she's working with um, who wants to establish himself in the uh, academic antiquities uh, community and uh, so they they discover the the secrets behind this vase and um, some of them are quite sinister um, so it sounds like quite an indulgent historical novel. And I have a couple of novels about young male experience in America today and they're both semi-autobiographical novels and I think there's been a number of articles recently sort of bemoaning the fact that there's not many young male voices in fiction today um, but here are a couple and I'm aware it's a sort of dialogue that's happening but one that I'm not all that interested in participating in to be honest but um, I, I think these do sound interesting so first off there's All Day is a Long Time by David Sanchez and this is a novel about a young
young man that runs away from home when he's only 14 years old and he quite quickly gets hooked on drugs and uh, then spends some time trying in rehab um, trying to, to recover to build his life back up and it's about that story as well as his process of wanting to become a writer and then there's the novel Folk Boy um, by Sean Thor Conroe um, which is uh, another semi-autobiographical novel about a young man that is trying to become a published writer and it's set in the time um, shortly after Trump uh, took office in America and about how he inhabits this kind of middle ground between the far right and the far left and it's written in this colloquial language um, you know that is used by young men in America today so it's sort of representing that point of view and uh, yeah I'm, I've, I've read a review of this which sort of described how like it doesn't really have all that much story um, so I, I'm not sure how much I'll find this engaging if I don't find you know the the voice itself that it's written in like really engaging but I'm, I'm interested to try it. Then I have a debut short story collection which is much more about the experience of girlhood and young womanhood uh, which is Send Nudes by Saba Sams and uh, this is a collection of 10 short stories which explore the complexities and contradictions of uh, young girlhood and uh, the, the sense of, uh, the, of growing up too quickly but then not growing up fast enough and the sense of succumbing to societal pressure but then also being a part of creating those those pressures and so exploring these these different contradictions through 10 separate short stories. There's an exciting new uh, essay and poetry uh, collection called East Side Voices edited by Helena Lee and uh, these are uh, voices and writers um, from East and Southeast Asia um, writing about the experience of, of living in Britain today and uh, there are a number of authors including uh, Rowan Hisio Buchanan and Charlene Tio and uh, Mary Jean Chan and uh, so I've read those authors before and really enjoyed their work as well as several other um, East and Southeast uh, Asian authors uh, living and working in Britain today. I also have a couple of nonfiction books which I think sound really intriguing. So first off there's Nietzsche in Turin uh, by Leslie Chamberlain and this is a, a biographical work about Nietzsche in the year 1888 when he moved to the city of Turin and it was a very productive year for him. Um, he produced a number of works in that year but it was also the last year of his life and um, early the next year um, he died and so it's um, exploring this sort of pivotal year in his career and a re-examination of his life from a new angle because a number of biographical works have been written about him and I love in the preface the author um, states at the very beginning this book is an attempt to befriend Nietzsche um, so that that's quite a fun way to begin. Then there is The Fairy Tellers by Nicholas Jubber and this is a non-fiction book looking at the actual history behind many of the most well-known fairy tales, um, some of which have origins um, which uh, we aren't aware of or, or aren't popularly known and um, and what those origins and the creations of these fairy tales say about the actual histories that they emerged out of, um, which is a really interesting concept. And I think what fairy tales say about us as a culture is, is so fascinating. And finally, I have a couple of books in translation uh, which I picked up recently when I went on a jaunt down to Foyle's bookshop. Uh, so first is a collection of short stories called Happy Stories Mostly by Norman Erickson Pasarabu uh, who's an Indonesian writer and in these short stories um, it says that uh, he puts uh, queer characters in plots and situations uh, that are normally inhabited by heterosexual characters and uh, I also like how it describes on the back that the stories talk to each other, echo phrases and themes and even shards of stories within other stories passing between airports, stacks of men's magazines and memories of Toy Story 3 such that each almost one almost feels like a puzzle piece of a larger whole um, which yeah just sounds really fascinating. And there is Phenotypes by Paulo Scott uh, translated by Daniel Hahn. This novel is set in modern-day Brazil and its narrator is of mixed-race origins uh, but passes for white 
and the story is about the government's uh, attempts to address problems to do with the racial quota system in its higher education. And I've read some uh, work translated by Daniel Han before, which I've really enjoyed. So I've been wanting to read more work um, that he's translated. So those are all of the books um, that I have received recently and that I'm really looking forward uh, to reading. I'd love to know if you're also interested in reading any of these, if you have read any of these and would recommend them, or if you've received other books or bought other books recently or taken out books from the library recently that you're really excited about. And I hope you get some quiet, relaxing reading time soon. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.